Welcome, brilliant minds and unstoppable spirits, to another episode on ADHD focus and motivation. Today, we embark on a journey through the digital mazes of one of the most iconic games in history, Tetris. A game that's not just about aligning blocks, but also aligning our thoughts, focus, and motivation, especially for those of us navigating the vibrant landscape of ADHD. Our story begins in the heart of Russia, 1984. In a small, cluttered office, an unassuming computer engineer, Alexei Pajitnov, birthed a phenomenon that would transcend cultures, languages, and ages. Alexei Pajitnov, a Soviet software engineer with a profound passion for puzzles and games, embarked on a journey that would eventually lead to the creation of one of the most iconic video games in history, Tetris. In the early 1980s, while working at the Dorodnitsyn Computing Center of the Academy of Science of the USSR in Moscow, Pajitnov's fascination with the concept of tiling puzzles intersected with his professional skills in computer programming. This convergence of interest and expertise set the stage for a groundbreaking innovation. The genesis of Tetris can be traced back to June 1984, when Pajitnov, inspired by a traditional puzzle game called Pentominoes, where players attempt to fit wooden shapes into a box, decided to create a digital version. However, Pajitnov's version introduced a dynamic element absent in the original game. The shapes, or tetrominoes, would fall from the top of the screen, and players needed to rotate and arrange them to form complete lines, which would then disappear, creating space for more shapes. This simple yet captivating mechanic was revolutionary. Pajitnov named his creation Tetris, a portmanteau of tetra, the Greek word meaning four, reflecting the four squares that composed each shape, and tennis, his favorite sport. The initial version of Tetris was developed on an Electronica 60, a Soviet-built computer, limiting its accessibility and graphical capabilities. Despite these constraints, the game's addictive nature quickly became apparent. Colleagues at the computing center became enthralled with Tetris, spending hours maneuvering the falling blocks. Recognizing the game's potential, Pajitnov, with the help of his friends and colleagues, ported it to the IBM PC where it gained significant traction, spreading like wildfire through the Soviet bloc's nascent computing community and eventually reaching the West. Tetris's journey from a modest computer lab in Moscow to becoming a global phenomenon is a testament to Pajitnov's ingenuity and the universal appeal of Tetris. Pajitnov's creation was a testament to the beauty of simplicity and the challenge of strategy, elements that resonate deeply with the ADHD mind. As we journey through the annals of Tetris history, we encounter a kaleidoscope of versions, each adding its own flavor to the Tetris saga. From the monochrome screens of the Electronica 60 to the vibrant displays of the modern consoles, Tetris has been reimagined and reincarnated more times than we can count. The Game Boy version, launched in 1989, wasn't just a game, it was a cultural moment, turning Tetris into a portable obsession and a companion for millions worldwide. The history of Tetris on the Nintendo Game Boy is a pivotal chapter in the saga of this iconic puzzle game, marking its transformation from a computer software curiosity into a global handheld gaming phenomenon. In 1989, Nintendo was on the verge of launching the Game Boy, a device that would redefine the landscape of portable gaming. In a strategic move that would cement the Game Boy's legacy, Nintendo's then-president, Hiroshi Yamauchi, and game designer Hank Rogers decided that Tetris not the internally developed Super Mario Brothers, would be the perfect launch title for the handheld console. The decision to bundle Tetris with the Game Boy was rooted in the game's universal appeal. Unlike games that relied heavily on language or complex narratives, Tetris offered a simple, intuitive, and highly addictive gameplay experience that transcended cultural and demographic barriers. This made it an ideal match for the Game Boy, which Nintendo envisioned as a gaming device for everyone, not just children or hardcore gamers. The handheld console and the game became an instant success, selling millions of units worldwide. Tetris's addictive nature made it the perfect companion for on-the-go gaming, turning idle time into an opportunity to challenge oneself to beat their high score or just enjoy the game's mesmerizing puzzle-solving. The Game Boy version of Tetris not only introduced the game to a broader audience, but also became a cultural touchstone of the late 20th century, symbolizing the rise of handheld gaming. Its success demonstrated the potential of mobile gaming, 
and laid the groundwork for the future of the industry, making Tetris an enduring classic that continues to be enjoyed by players of all ages. Let's delve into the myriad of other versions that have adorned our screens over the years. Tetris DX, Tetris Worlds, Tetris 99, and Tetris Effect each bring their own unique twist to the Tetris formula. Tetris DX, with its color and new game modes, introduced a new generation to the joy of Tetris. Tetris Worlds, with its six different worlds and varying gravity levels, challenged players to adapt and strategize in new ways. Tetris 99 emerged as a groundbreaking iteration of the classic Tetris game, ingeniously blending the timeless puzzle gameplay with the competitive fervor of the battle royale genre. Launched in February 2019 as an exclusive title for Nintendo Switch Online subscribers, Tetris 99 presented a fresh and exhilarating challenge to both seasoned Tetris enthusiasts and newcomers alike. Developed by Arika and published by Nintendo, the game pits 99 players against each other in a frenetic match where the objective is not just to clear lines and score points, but to outlast 98 other competitors in real time. The genius of Tetris 99 lies in its ability to maintain the core mechanics of traditional Tetris gameplay while introducing a competitive twist that adds depth and strategy beyond merely clearing lines. Players are thrust into a high-stakes environment where they must quickly decide not only where to place their falling Tetriminos, but also how to strategically send garbage lines to obstruct their opponent's grids. The game introduces a targeting system allowing players to direct their attacks at opponents who are close to being knocked out. Those targeting them, random players, or those performing the best at any given moment. This strategic layer adds a significant amount of tension and tactical decision-making to the classic Tetris formula, making each match unpredictable and engaging. Tetris 99's reception was overwhelmingly positive, with players and critics praising its innovative integration of the Battle Royale format into the Tetris universe. The game breathed new life into the franchise, attracting a diverse audience ranging from nostalgic fans of the original Tetris to those drawn in by the competitive battle royale craze. Its success highlighted the timeless appeal of Tetris, proving that a game designed in the 1980s could be reinvented in a way that feels fresh, modern, and relevant in today's gaming landscape. Tetris 99 stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of Tetris showcasing the game's unparalleled ability to evolve and captivate players across generations. But what is it about Tetris that captivates and motivates, especially for those of us with ADHD? It's the game's inherent structure, the clear goals and immediate feedback that mirror the strategies we use to navigate life. Each piece that falls represents a task, a decision, a moment that requires our focus. The game teaches us about managing tasks, prioritizing, and the satisfaction of clearing lines akin to clearing tasks from our mental lists. Tetris, with its straightforward yet engaging gameplay, has shown surprising benefits for individuals with ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, providing more than just entertainment. The game structure, requiring quick decision-making and sustained attention to rapidly falling blocks, aligns well with the ADHD brain's inclination towards tasks that offer immediate feedback and engagement. This aspect of Tetris can help individuals with ADHD practice and improve their focus and concentration in a way that's inherently rewarding and stimulating. The game's demand for players to anticipate and plan for the placement of tetriminoids encourages the development of executive functions, a set of cognitive skills that include working memory, flexible thinking, and self-control. These are areas where individuals with ADHD often face challenges. Playing Tetris can serve as a low-stress, enjoyable exercise for the brain, helping to strengthen these skills in a context that feels more like leisure than work. Moreover, the game's predictable and repetitive nature can provide a soothing experience for ADHD minds, which are frequently seeking stimulation. The immediate sense of accomplishment from clearing lines in Tetris can also be particularly gratifying for individuals with ADHD, offering a tangible reward for their focus and strategic planning. This positive reinforcement can boost self-esteem and motivation, counteracting feelings of frustration or inadequacy that people with ADHD might experience in other areas of life. Now let's turn our attention to a feat that left the world in awe, the shattering of a Tetris world record. For decades after its 1989 release, each of the hundreds of millions of standard NS Tetris games ended the same way. A block reaches the top of the screen and triggers a game over message. 
That 34-year streak was finally broken on December 21, 2023, when 13-year-old Phenom Blue Scooty became the first human to reach the game's kill screen after a 40-minute 1-5-11 line performance crashing the game by reaching its functional limits. What makes Blue Scooty's achievement even more incredible, as noted in some excellent YouTube summaries of the scene, is that until just a few years ago, the Tetris community at large assumed it was functionally impossible for a human to get much past 290 lines. The road to the first NES Tetris kill screen highlights the surprisingly robust competitive scene that still surrounds the classic game. The Tetris saga isn't confined to the digital realm. The new Tetris movie, a captivating narrative that hit the screens recently, delves deep into the enthralling and complex history behind the iconic game. Rather than focusing solely on the gameplay that has captivated millions worldwide, the film explores the intriguing backstory of Tetris's creation and its tumultuous journey from a simple computer program in the Soviet Union to becoming a global phenomenon. The storyline is set against the backdrop of the Cold War era, adding a layer of historical intrigue and drama to the personal and technological narratives at play. At the heart of the film is the story of Alexei Payitnov, the game's creator, whose passion for puzzles led to the creation of Tetris in the mid-1980s. The movie beautifully captures the challenges Pajitnov faced in a politically charged environment, highlighting the hurdles of intellectual property rights and the game's eventual emergence into the Western market. It's a tale of creativity, perseverance, and the unexpected paths innovation can take. Through compelling storytelling and character development, the Tetris movie offers audiences a glimpse into the human element behind the game, making it not just a film about a video game, but a testament to the enduring spirit of innovation and the universal language of gaming. It's a story that resonates with many of us, reminding us that behind every great creation is a journey fraught with challenges, but also filled with moments of triumph and creativity. Tetris is more than a game. It's a metaphor for life, especially life with ADHD. It teaches us about adaptability, the joy of finding order in chaos, and the importance of viewing each new challenge as an opportunity. Each block that falls is a new situation, a new challenge that requires our immediate attention and strategic thinking. So, how can we apply the principles of Tetris to our daily lives? It starts with understanding that, like the game, life is unpredictable, and success lies in our ability to adapt and make quick decisions. We can practice breaking down tasks into smaller, manageable blocks, prioritizing them, and tackling them one at a time, just as we would approach each new tetrimino that falls. In closing, let Tetris serve as a reminder that in the game of life, especially a life with ADHD, we have the power to create order from chaos, to find focus amidst distraction, and to turn obstacles into opportunities for growth and success. Let's embrace our unique minds, celebrate our victories, no matter how small, and continue to build a life that's as colorful and dynamic as a game of Tetris. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If this story has inspired you, sparked an idea, or simply brought you joy, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more content designed to empower, educate, and entertain. Until next time, keep stacking your blocks high and your goals even higher. Stay well.